and welcome back to Smugville, as I take pride in knowing how much better a person I am than this entire family in what remains of Edith Finch. Now, I'm pretty sure that's not the emotion Giant Sparrow was hoping to evoke, but art isn't exactly an exact science now, is it? Which, I suppose, is why they call it art instead of calling it, like, emotionology. But still, th the more I play of What Remains of Edith Finch, the more I get the feeling that I get when I watch reality television. Which is to say that everyone that I'm seeing in front of me is so utterly loathsome and despicable that by comparison, I seem like a pretty nice person. And it doesn't matter how wretched a human being I am, and I am fairly wretched, but it doesn't matter how awful you are. When you watch reality television, you will still get that feeling of superiority. And that that's why reality TV is so popular. It's why it's so ubiquitous as well. It doesn't matter how terrible you are. I guarantee you that if you took Gary Ridgway, possibly the worst serial killer of all time, and you sat Gary Ridgway down in front of a television and put on a Dance Moms marathon, when Gary Ridgway walked out of that room, he'd be thinking to himself, man, I may have raped, murdered, and defiled the corpses of like 70 sex workers, but holy shit, man, those Dance Moms, they're the real monsters. At least I had the decency to kill my victims and put them out of their fucking misery. Abby Lee, she just lets them keep suffering. And yet I'm the guy in prison? How is that fair? <sighs> Peter, did you just say Abby Lee is worse than Gary Ridgway, who murdered like 70 prostitutes? Yes, I did. Abby Lee is, I think, demonstrably a worse person than Gary Ridgway. She just doesn't kill. She'd be more merciful if she did. Anyway, we've made it back up to the treehouse. I suppose we can, like, get back, on back into Grandma Edie's room from here? Edith, you really got to work on your uh, on your phrasing here. At, at some point in this playthrough, I'd really like you to complete a fucking sentence without pausing dramatically halfway through. If she told me there was going to be so much climbing. You'd uh, told Grandma Edie to go straight to hell and kicked her out of her wheelchair and broken her hip? I never would have come when I was 22 weeks pregnant. Wait, what? We're 22 weeks pregnant? So the girl on the boat is our daughter then, right? Also, yeah, this is a remarkably stupid thing for a pregnant woman to do. One, you're pregnant 22 weeks. Your balance and shit is going to be all off. I don't want to fire shots at pregnant ladies, but they tend to get, you know, 22 weeks is right about the time where their body starts to get a little bit off balance. Their center of gravity changes. They start to have a little bit of, like, clumsiness issues. It seems like this... This is a terrible idea, Edith. Terrible. Edith Finch is going to be the one Finch who's unborn. <sighs> okay, so, well, we know who the girl in the boat is, at least. It's got to be Edith's daughter. But wait, if Edith is in 2017, how far in the future, then, was that boat ride? Because that girl looked to be at least in her late teens. She was unattended on a ferry. She's going to be, what, 15, 16, old enough to drive at least. It means it's like 2032. How come that ferry wasn't a little more high-tech? In 2032, I'd have expected a little better technology. All right, back to the Finch house. Hey, on the plus side, we did get... Him, but I think he and my mom had a lot in common. And that they were both trying to escape the horrors of the rest of their entire family, and they were, in fact, horrible, and both of them had the cognizance to know it? Probably. On the plus side, one thing we did do, we did circumvent the locked elevator, like the locked staircase that goes up to the third floor, so we could finally start getting into the Harry Potter part of the house. I've really been working and looking forward to my adventures in Hogwarts here. As long as there's no Dobby to leap around and irritate me, I'm going to be quite pleased. So this has got to be Grandpa Sam's room. Okay. Oh, so Grandpa Sam became, uh, he channeled his rage and anger into the slaughter of innocent animals. Okay. Well, Grandpa Sam, I mean, it's still questionable behavior. I mean, what did this duck ever do to you? Sam spent his Wait. life shooting photos, but Mom said he got nervous being in front of the camera. Yeah, it did look like photos were the only thing he spent his life shooting. 
Guy was a war veteran. Probably safe to say he murdered some people. He also appears to have loved to engage in a rampant slaughter of nearby wildlife. I don't have a problem with that as long as he Isn't ate it when he was done. Sam seemed to go out of his way to meet it. And he was killed by a grizzly bear like that uh, out in the wild, that grizzly man. Everybody said, don't go live with the bears, Rick. They're going to tear you apart. Then sure enough, boy, that tore him right apart. We told Uncle Sam the same thing, but old Grandpa Sam, he wasn't listening. Did he mount a kitten? Grandpa Sam, you fucking monster. He mounted a kitten, and it's fighting a mounted... This, this is hard. Ah, Grandpa Sam. I'm trying to reconnect with my grandfather, and I'm connecting with a legacy of terrifically horrid. Look at this. He mounted a kitten. Kitten died a natural cause. You know, I don't care. I, I don't care that it died of natural causes. Also, given the fact that I'm guessing everything else in this room died of natural causes as well, because, you know, it's pretty natural to die when somebody puts a bullet into your heart. <sighs> Grandpa Sam. Oh, we can't see. All right, we can't see out the inside of the people. So what kind of books was Grandpa Sam into? Probably it's going to say stuff like, he has a book that's just called Prone? What the fuck? That's, that's real weird. From private to parent, okay. Goblins and ghouls. Don't you mean Dungeons and Dragons? Oh, Pete, fire and shot. No, I play it. I'm not firing shots. Returning home, documenting danger. Real flag warning. Wait, red flag warning? Red flag warning. The Constitution for Kids, Great American Poetry. Hey, he has one book on his shelf that's not horrible. I bet that has some Robert Frost and probably Walt Whitman in it. Maybe a little, uh, maybe a little Elson, maybe a little E.E. E. Cummings. All right, it's probably all right. Hunker Down. For a second, I saw that title and I thought it said Hunk Town. And I was like, wait, was Grandpa Sam into dudes? Shutter, more great American poetry. Okay. Guide to murdering in the Pacific Northwest. I mean, hunting. Pete, you're picking on hunters. No, I really don't. I mean, uh, hunting is, I don't have any objection to hunting. As long as you're hunting for food and not just straight up for sport, it doesn't, doesn't bother me at all. Animals are delicious, and if you want to ingest their deliciousness, you know, you got to kill them first. And it's just a humane thing to do. Hunting for sport, I have problems with. But hunting for food, man, totally cool. Pete, are you, like, espousing a, uh, a Ted Nugent philosophy? I think maybe Ted Nugent takes it to, like, argument by hyperbole levels, but, you know, shooting an animal and eating it, it's just uh, par for the course. How come all of our mom's things are in one old post bin? Meanwhile, the rest of the room is a monument to destroyed animals. Not really cool with the whole displaying your kill aspect of the hunting either. Tax Plus... I think we can all just agree that taxidermy is real fucking weird, right? Just like having anything taxidermied is pretty fucked up. Hey, let's preserve this dead rotting animal carcass and stick it in the corner of a... Uh, no, just it's fine. Put the parts that you're not going to eat, just throw those parts away. You don't have to use the whole animal. We don't need Bambi's mom immortalized... Well, Bambi's dad, probably. Immortalized here on the wall for all time. It's no wonder Bambi never knew his father. He... People would be like, oh, Bambi's dad was a deadbeat. He abandoned Bambi's mother and left her to raise her son all alone. No, he didn't. He got murdered. Poor Bambi having to grow up fatherless. Okay. Pictures of Grandpa Sam in the war. Grandpa Sam has a... That's a camera with a really, really long lens. Compensating for something, Grandpa Sam? Hmm? Maybe? So we can go read. The only interactable object in this room is the book, huh? S. Finch. Okay. Well, I mean, it wouldn't be a finch unless you had your ubiquitous bottles of dry gin, wine, what appears to be some manner of scotch whiskey, and a bunch of bottles of pills, because there's nothing Grandpa Sam loved more than killing animals except for chasing a fistful of Vicodin with a nice little dry gin. You were a good man, a good family man, Uncle Sam. I can, Grandpa Sam, whatever. I can see why everything worked out so well for you and why your family turned out to be long-lived, healthy, and happy. Absolutely no confusion there. All right, let's see what Grandpa Sam was all about. Let's unleash the horror. Wait, Grandpa Sam was a nom. 
When I say we're unleashing the horror here, we could be literally getting into, like, Colonel Kurtz territory. The horror. The horror. Nope, it's actually a picture of Grandpa Sam. He took a picture of himself. And I don't know what that's a picture of, but they look very unwilling. Don, I promise you'll never forget this weekend. Who is Don? These memories are going to last a lifetime. Who's, who's Don again? Am are we supposed to, to focus? Anything? It's a hunting trip, Don. Shooting is strongly encouraged. The answer to that question properly, Dad, was no, honey. Not if you don't want to. I'm not going to force you to murder a helpless critter. If you don't want to murder, you know, you don't have to murder. That's totally fine. See, we're recycling some of uh, Grandpa Walter's leftover snacker stackers. Well, that's good. I mean, uh, every part of the buffalo, right? It's not like anybody was eating them down in the basement. Does that say kill more? Something in Smalls kill more. You know, when your 50 caliber bullet ain't enough, try Larry and Smalls new 80 caliber kill more. It's a half a mile wide. Tired of not firing tank shells at a helpless deer? Feel free, cause Larry and Killboy, you need an 80 caliber rifle? We got you covered. Killboy kills more. It's actually a great name for firearms or like a ammunition. Killboy kills more. The commercials write themselves. Grandpa, okay, so there's Grandpa Finch's bag. Nice reuse of assets, Giant Sparrow. It's nice to see we got at least a nice pine tree air freshener. Although I have to ask, is the pine tree air freshener totally necessary when you live in the Pacific Northwest? Shouldn't the rich, hearty scent of pine be readily available at most times? Perfect. Well, I mean, you know, it's good work for an amateur, I suppose. Whole weekend, isn't it? Again, Pacific Northwest, so... Seems like maybe probably ought to be par for the course. Maybe we could capture a photo of Bigfoot? Oh, it's the Odin we'll Finch National Park. This weekend, Dad. So are we just going to take pictures of our daughter? Is that all we're doing? That must be our car. What's this over here? Odin Finch trail map. Also, I hear cars driving, but I don't see any cars. Smile, Don. Let's get things focused here. Don's going to smile. We're going to frame her up real nice and weird so that she's like not in the center of the frame. There we go. Perfect. Okay, got it. Yeah, that was fantastic. Hey, also, why are... Careful. The camera's older than you are. How come we had pink painted fingernails when we moved that photograph? Ostensibly, that was Grandpa Sam taking uh, the photos. And I don't want to, like, you know, call anybody out on their gender persuasions or whatever. If you're a dude want to paint your fingernails, that's totally cool, man. You'd be like My Chemical Romance, paint them black or, you know, whatever color you want. You want frilly pink nails? I say go for it. But I gotta say, it really seems sort of uh, out of character for a vir virile, manly man war veteran like Grandpa Sam. Uh, you know what? Maybe I'm projecting. Maybe I am. Maybe Grandpa Sam was, uh, maybe he was really feminine in the off time. Maybe he was really in touch with his feminine side. Maybe I'm judging. Here we go. Let's take a picture of the finch, because that's not doubly appropriate, huh? Actually, that kind of looks like an eastern bluebird. Wait, that's the same bird we were chasing as Molly. That miserable fuck. You killed my aunt. <sighs> I'm going to hunt that bird down, gut it like a fish, turn it over to my dad, having him taxidermy it, and put it next to the corpse of a kitten that he likewise taxidermied in some kind of action fight pose. How many pictures can I take? Is there a limit? So when Grandpa Sam was taking the pictures, we had pink painted fingernails. When I'm taking the pictures, also pink painted fingernails. Actually, that hand looks suspiciously like Edith's hand. Can we focus this a little better? Not really. What am I supposed to be taking pictures of here besides the bird? Does it matter? Here, what about a picture just like the tall grass? Macro photography. Do I got to shoot the whole roll? I'm not really much of a photo bug. It's just me, Perfidious Pete. I prefer to just kind of experience life and sort of take it in as opposed to 
documenting something nobody in their right mind ever really would give a shit about seeing. Be like, oh, let's document your life, Pete. And trust me, it's be the most boring documentary of all time. Nobody wants to fucking see that shit. How much film is in this camera? Let's get like a wide angle nature shot. The problem is at a wide angle, literally every single thing is way the hell out of focus. Here we go. Like close up of the trees. We done yet? Oh, another shot of these birds, I guess. Can't have too many bird pictures, am I right? Get a photo of the reeds. How about just a nice clean shot of the water? There we go. Brilliant. That's a that's a keeper. Uh photo of some garbage washed up on shore? Why not? A uh, distant shot of what appears to be a Bigfoot walking with Aunt Barbara through the trees? What am I supposed to be taking a picture of here? Is there something I'm supposed to snap a photo of to get out of this? Or can I just like start? I'm just going to let's just burn through some film. I don't care about anything anymore. Campsite, maybe? Nope. Old jug? Nope. What am I supposed to be photographing game? I took a picture of the bird already. The bird flew to the island. Am I supposed to take another picture? It's, it's got to be like more bird, right? I photographed literally everything there is to photograph at this point. There's nothing left. A game. Is this like the music box thing where you're just going to make me do this until I literally want to vomit? Not a drunk all that coffee. Oh, no. We're supposed to take a picture of Dad. Hold still while I take a picture of you. Yeah. I definitely won't be moving. Let's take a picture of our pissing Does father. sound like I'm done? <sighs> Nothing quite like being outside. Yeah, you know, except maybe peeing indoors. Probably a little better. Hey. <laughs> That's a keeper. Oops. No. No, it's definitely not a keeper. I'm just saying. I'm not always going to be here, Dom. You'll need to remember this stuff if you want to survive. Really? Fine, Dad. Yeah, because we live in a civilized society and knowing how to murder my own food isn't really that necessary anymore. I know, Dad. You're always serious. Doesn't being out here make you want to chill out? Nope. I'll tell you the truth. I haven't been out here in 20 years. It's actually the opposite of chilling out for me, Don. It brings back a lot of haunting memories of my time back in Nam when I would have literally killed a man for a pack of snacker stackers. With my brother Calvin. Man, that was a great trip. We got so fucking shit faced on dry gin. Wasn't even funny. Then we used that fire to brew some homemade moonshine. Calvin got drunk off his ass. We stumbled down an old logging trail and almost fell into a ravine. I bet if I could remember where that trail was, we'd spot a buck for you in no time. Uh, are are you really gonna make me kill some? I would really rather. The only thing shots I want to take of that deer, are just you know, like the kind I'm taking right now, this old coffee can. Ooh, fires. <gasps> red bear soup. A oh, red bean soup. Oh, we got a <gasps> anti Warhol. I did it! I've become Warhol, creator of cans. I am become Warhol, creator of memes. What is it specifically I'm supposed to be taking a picture of here? Probably Grandpa Sam. What was it? That's in focus enough. Don, don't you think you could find something more interesting to photograph? Well, I've photographed pretty much everything there's possible to photograph here. How about the public hunting sign? Is there anything more interesting to... Oh, here we go. Let's take a picture of this gun. Poems by who? I gotta see the author. Focus! We can't, we can't focus it well enough to see the author. I must know. I got a great shot of my gun. Is there maybe something more interesting around here? Probably this bird. Dad. It's all birds. Nice, 
and deer. Before you take the shot, let me get a picture of you. Oh, he's going to get a picture of us. Dad, I, I want a photo of my first kill. Focus on how you'll feel when you've taken the life of that animal. Focus on how delicious its blood will taste flowing beyond your lips. Don, you don't have to do anything, but if you want to survive, you'll need to be strong. Now shoot the deer! Kill it! Murder a living animal! You shot it right in the brain! Great work, Don! Seriously, Grandpa Sam? You pause to take a fucking selfie! With your weeping daughter. Always remember that, okay? As you cry over your first kill, the warm, salty tears pouring down your face. <laughs> remember that daddy's proud of you for having taken Sorry, a life of a living thing. <laughs> and I'm supposed to run up here, I guess? Come on, honey, let's get a shot of you with your first victim. Dad? You're a real finch think, now, girl. That's totally so normal, Don. Just focus on the camera. Try not to think about Dad. it. You know what, Grandpa Sam? You fucking deserve that. Yep. So, the so legacy of the horrible way. continues. You wish that was the one your mother have told you about how she was sort of partly responsible for her father's death? How she should have just said, no, daddy, no, I don't want to kill the helpless deer? <sighs> well, the Finch family legacy of shame continues. It's not just a legacy of shame. It's also a legacy of horribleness. So, Grandpa Sam, I guess we're going to add you to the list of uh, overbearing, overpressuring parents. But on the plus side... At least you didn't take Don out, let her drink a 30-gallon jug of gin, and then fling herself off of a swing set. Also, you know what, Grandpa Sam? You deserve that. You really did. Also, I think we deserve for this episode to be over. If you enjoyed it, feel free to drop a like down in the comment section. Support really does mean a lot. If you'd like to see more of the poetic justice that is the death of the Finch clan, might consider subscribing as well. Post new episodes of Edith Finch every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. Right now, thanks very much for watching. I'll see you again soon.